my romance readers, I am Liz Donatelli. Welcome to Reader Seeks Romance, the number one romance novel talk show on YouTube. Author Mia Heinzelman joins me to discuss her rom-com Monopolov, book one in the Love and Games series. And Mia plays a non-competitive round of Apples to Apples Sexy Board Game <laughs> Romance Edition. Enjoy! And be sure to like and subscribe. Welcome to Reader Seeks Romance, Mia. Thank you so much for having me. Here I am with yes. Monopoly. Congratulations on the release of Monopoly. Thank you so much. It's been just a whirlwind, and I'm so excited about this book. And I'm just kind of excited that people are really loving it. I just finished it today, and I, I just read for hours. I could not put it down. I was like... I got to see where this is going, what's going to happen. So tell me about the coat. This is Harper's coat. I will be having a coat for each of my heroines. And um, it's just the red trench. It's her famous red trench from the beginning of the book when she's just running out to Java Joy to get some coffee. And uh, she thought it was going to be an in and out trip. Little did she know she'd be leaving with a, a rival, <laughs> uh, a bad first impression with a second one to come. What came first, the book cover or the coat? The coat came first, right? And then was inspiration for the cover? Uh, she, I was looking, I'm always, while I'm writing, I'm always looking to see what kind of outfit can I give them while I'm writing? Because I want it to feel really real. So, you know, I have my Pinterest board <laughs> and it's got all kinds of outfits and things. And so when I knew that she was going to be in this red coat, uh, at the at Java Joy, the coffee house. Then, as I'm um, also a cover designer and illustrator, and I did this cover, then I decided this would be great for the cover. It really pops, really goes with the Monopoly red. And so then I bought the jacket too as part of my marketing. That kind of fun. is brilliant, brilliant. So the coat is kind of a way to find your character. It's kind of a way into the story for you as a writer. Like it's a, it's a problem. Like an actor would have a prop to, to um, inform the character. Yes. That's what you're doing with the, I think that's fantastic. Absolutely. I love when actors do that too. And I do try to add that in my stories just so you just have a little piece of them and it feels like, Oh, this is something Harper would wear, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the tie in with the the hotels are red, correct? The the hotels are yes. red in Monopoly. So it's yeah. That's right. And I am loving your PJs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for I've had this for many years as a kid. I loved Monopoly. Nobody ever liked playing with me. <laughs> Not because I won. It's because they knew that the game would take forever. It was always there's no yes. end to Monopoly. It goes on for hours. <laughs> it's one of those games where it just sits on the table and you can come back and forth to it as long as you remember who had the last move. Yes. And I never thought of that. See, they, I always had to have a time limit or nobody would play. So, <laughs> but in in Monopolove, I was struck by the fact that the game was out and they would go back to it. I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. Like a jigsaw yeah. puzzle. Like you would just do a little, you know, and then come back. Mm -hmm. And I love I love that, you know, it helps to grow that connection and that camaraderie. So I, um, yes. But before I get ahead of myself, tell me about the Hasbro romance between <laughs> your romance protagonists. Harper and Declan, how does the board game Monopoly bring them together? And please inform everyone who hasn't read the book yet what a Hasbro romance is. Okay. <laughs> it's just basically you've got Hasbro Nation, right? Hasbro is a game uh, producer and they put out all these fun games. And so to me, the most classic of them all is, is Monopoly, Monopoly. So that's why I chose it for the first book in this series because we got love and board games and everything. So I figured this would be awesome. Now a has bromance is a romance between people who love Hasbro games, basically. <laughs> it could also be like a has bromance between, you know, you've got your guys and you guys are bros and you've got a bromance going on. So it, it could be either or, but with Harper and Declan, they come together because she owns Love and Games, which is a game shop that sells classic board games. And her store is 
is failing right now. And so they've got to raise some funds. So she decides to enter the Monopoly tournament, the local city Monopoly tournament. Now, Declan, he is from Vegas and he is a doctor who's just hanging out in town to fix up his grandfather's home. He's preparing to sell it, doing some renovations and things. Now, renovations, everybody knows, never, ever goes according to plan or budget. So naturally, <laughs> mm-hmm. there's a lot of hiccups that happen that leave him with some spare time. And he ends up at Loving Games, where he ends up um, entering the Monopoly tournament against Harper. So they get their little Hasbro man started, despite their bad first two impressions on, of each other. Yes, it's a rocky start. Yes. <laughs> she's just, um, you could just tell she's been burned a little bit. And so she just really doesn't like to owe anyone. So when at the beginning, we're at the coffee shop, naturally, again, this she's in the red trench. And she just really found out about her business failing and that they've got to do something to save it. And so she's not starting off the new year great with that news. So like anybody who just needs their coffee to function and become anything other than a zombie, <laughs> she needs her coffee in the morning and they're out of K-Cups at home. She used the last one. And so now she's at this coffee shop and all she wants is this coffee. But her phone app doesn't work because she got a new phone and she's begging, can you please do something? Where's Lucy? Lucy knows me. Anybody, can you help me? I have money on this app and the store manager is not hearing it. And it's Declan who steps in with a $10 bill telling her to pay it forward. And she's not really keen on it. So she's like, but she's thankful and grateful, but she doesn't want to owe some good looking stranger who thinks he's just going to swoop in and save the day. Yes. Harper is such a juicy protagonist because there's so many layers to her. You know, because people, yeah. most people are like, oh, why didn't she just accept it and pay it forward and move on? But <laughs> but there's, as you get to know later on, which I won't reveal, there were really solid reasons for her reaction to Declan's yes. offer, which I really appreciated and felt was unique and more nuanced than other romance mm-hmm. protagonists, you know, that I've I've encountered. So I really grew to appreciate because at first you're like, well, why are you being so stubborn? You know, uh, but but you really do grow <laughs> to appreciate her. He's like, can't you just accept the good deed and, and move on with your day? And she's like, no, thank you. I would really like to pay you back, please. Yeah. What like app can I pay you back on? What bank are you with? I just want to pay you back. I don't want to owe you. And yeah. then you find out later why she doesn't want to owe anyone and why money is such a weird thing for her. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I really was like, Oh, I could sink my teeth into Harper because she's, she, I can't really figure her out yet. You know? So it's like, you're alone for the ride. Like I want to get into her head. Is there this esoteric monopoly gaming subculture as explored (laughs) in Monopoly? Because, you know, as we mentioned, the Hasbro man, there's also mention of Has Brothers. There's a mention of Monopoly tournaments. Um, there are people who, you know, wear the merch. Uh, you yes. Know. So, no, they're a Walt. <laughs> it, yes, like, Walt, is, is this a thing or is this of your own invention? I like to imagine it is real. But as far as I know, it's a figment of my imagination because I, I love nerdy fun stuff like this when you're kind of a fanatic for something you know there's lots of people who love monopoly it's like one of the most licensed games out there everybody's got a version of monopoly but that speaks to a lot of people a lot of cultures across ages and so it's got cross appeal for lots of demographics and i love that about it you know you you don't it's not pigeonholed by oh this is this subset of people so anybody could technically be part of Hasbro Nation, you know, from any age and no matter what you're into, you could be into Star Wars, you could be into, you know, My Little Pony, there's a monopoly for you out there. (laughs) Well, I am even more impressed that you created such an authentic sounding fandom, because I, (laughs) I said, oh, it's got to be that Mia 
tapped into this world and is shining a light on it <laughs> because it sounded <laughs> so real. I was like, I could completely see this. And I really think if you could get a local bookstore to host a Monopoly tournament and you sign books yes. and, you, and you run it and you're like the judge, you're the banker or something. I think that would be fantastic. <laughs> the secret $500 bill under the board. Yeah. Now there are tournaments. But okay. the whole subculture, I'm not okay. So but the tournaments, I would imagine, then aren't that prevalent because if they were, wouldn't there be no. a subculture? So it must just be like what every now exactly. and again there's a tournament. But this could be you could make this a thing. You could bring this to life, real life. <laughs> I know. I'm really considering um, reaching out to some local game stores too yes. and see what they think. So oh, that could yeah. be really fun. Absolutely. Now. Have you ever been to a board game store outside of, let's say, you know, a toy store or something that's going to have games? But have you encountered any type of mom and pop, small businesses? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Not too okay. far from here. Mm -hmm. There's a shop called Shall We Play? And it's got all kinds of board games and fun stuff. And I just thought it was so cool. And there's lots of them around because I was looking for inspiration for, I'm always looking for images so that I can kind of get an idea of how to describe it on the page. And there's so many game stores out there. Um, they're kind of few and far between in each city, but they're out there. I found this very interesting. Harper at one point is thinking to herself about Declan. He's certainly hot enough to be a Declan. And that's a direct quote. And it gave me pause. <laughs> Are Declans known to be hot? People with that name. <laughs> because it was almost like it was kind of of a given. Like, well, you know, Declans are, you know. Declans are hot. Declan. So I'm wondering, um, is that something you found in your experiences? That people named Declan? Well, I have an answer for this, actually. Because it's not that they're just, they look so hot. It's that I noticed that a lot of romance books have Declans in them and they're always hot. And so she reads, they're all fans of romance because every heroine I have usually is. <laughs> um, and so in these books that they read, there's always a Declan and he's always hot and he's always got like a Henley on and he's got a casual lean in a doorway with his forearms exposed and, yeah. and he's just hot. Yeah, actually, so I just I figure, yeah, that makes sense. I a, actually, after I read that, I was like, you know what? It does sound like you know Declan is a romance protagonist <laughs> name, and yeah, right. I'm sure there's romance. like some Declan that's in Ireland somewhere who's just not hot at all, and <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird to say. But you know, I don't know who he is. I haven't like looked up Mr. Declan. <laughs> Well, Declan in <laughs> ugly so Declan funny. in Ireland, but it never show his face because he's going to ruin it for the rest of us. He's got to stay <laughs> hidden. <laughs> I just love this question so much because it's just so funny. Like, um, you know, are Declan Todd? You know, I don't know if that was the case. But you're right. Declan yes. is a name that would be selected um, as yeah. a, as a. You're a totally going to have some Luke Lucas. Logan, Declan, yeah. they're all going to be like so hot yeah. in all the romance. Yeah. <laughs> there is a, a memorable quote that I wanted to bring up because since you're very into marketing and you seem to be very knowledgeable about how to package um, your work, so to speak, um, I feel as if this should be on some swag that you <laughs> give away or sell. It I will is, be taking notes. Okay, it is a quote from Harper. Sex should always come before food and definitely before a freaking board game. I was struck by the wisdom of that. Is that true? That Wait I, a minute now. I think that's rocks. That sounds like rocks saying wait, that is it? to Harper. Do I stand I think that's, Har that's rocks. Okay. Was she saying it to Harper? Because Harper, yes. Harper's okay. saying... You know, we're going to go, we're going to go get some food. You know, we'll, you know, uh, we'll play some Monopoly. We'll get some food and then we'll go shopping or something like that. And she's like, wait a minute now, you know, because she's trying to tell her, let's get you a good outfit. Let's get your leg shaved. And um, 
<laughs> get you ready for this date with this guy. So yeah. That's right. So rocks. But it does feel yeah. like that should be a truth. Well, I was going to ask, have you in your personal experiences found that to be true and it made it onto the page? Just let's get the steam. Then we'll worry about them having yes. a meal together and all yeah. this other stuff. Yeah, I um, I appreciate that. And I could totally see that on a sticker or something sold at not only a bookstore, but a board game store where you would go and buy. Yes. Of course, it would have to be a store, maybe not where kids are walking in reading that <laughs> right but but i think that that would be if you were to ask me liz what quote from the book should i put on a keychain or a bumper sticker or you know a backpack i would say that's it i love that so we'll be taking i'm going to be writing that down as we speak because yes. i feel like i need to to have that for future reference <laughs> yes yes and being i just threw out the idea of doing a backpack it, I, I don't know where that came from. Now I think you have to do the backpack, but make it big enough so it could fit a board game in it. Yes. It's a board game backpack. Gosh. Could you imagine? Like, you know how there's like tennis racket bags yes. and everything? It feels like you should have a board game bag like that. Absolutely. Crazy. And it Maybe should be branded that. to love and games. I'm writing this quote down <laughs> so I can go find it afterwards because now I feel like I need to do it. <laughs> Being you mentioned rocks, okay, so uh, she is Harper's sister, and yes. she, if I don't know if you're willing to uh, give a little bit of a um, teaser, yeah. she's in the second book. Yes, and she's coming July 6th, so rocks is Harper's sister. Now, in the book, they are, they admit that they're half sisters, but that they weren't raised that way which I know personally about that. You know, you just are raised as sisters. You love each other, you take care of each other and your sisters, and that's it. You're going to get on each other's nerves, but that just comes with the territory of being a sibling. Um, now, she is very different than Harper because Harper is very, Her she says that her mom is like a flowery child and, you know, she's very carefree and signs. And then Harp, uh, Rox is just list and logic and numbers and she everything has to make sense to her so she's very regimented and i love this about her so much because her book now it's they always say the last book you wrote is probably your favorite book but i still love that book so much too um i cannot wait for people to meet rocks because she's a list maker which that comes from me <laughs> <laughs> where wow. it's like soon as you get ideas you've got to jot it down so she's always got a list but she has she's extreme she has a book of lists, which is just oh, so many things that she's got to get done. Like she's got a 30 before 30 list. And then, you know, the get my man list that her friend helped her come up with. It's just so many lists and it's hilarious. And she's paired up with Declan's best friend, Murr, who is a player. Mm -hmm. And he is just... <laughs> <laughs> about to get uh, his his world flipped upside down because yeah he's going to see rocks and with some competition. Let's just say that I'm looking forward to reading oh. their story because I I yeah. love the potential for the explosive chemistry between them because they're so different. Mm -hmm. Um, or at least coming yeah. from different places. Both trivia. Yes, as I like that you've planted the seeds for mm -hmm. their romance um, by showing uh, Murph his interest in trivia. So uh, Trivial yes. Pursuit is the name of the game for the next book. Yes. So I'm excited about that. Um, yes. Yeah, so. Um, and, and it's so fun because I bring in trivia night. There's also, I mean, I really wish this place existed but it does in my head. <laughs> and there's this game, like this trivia night in Vegas that is just on so many levels, like level 10 of trivia night. And I'm just, I really want to go to it. So I'm going to talk to somebody. Can we make this happen in real life, please? <laughs> because I really need to go. Yeah. Um, but there's just so many fun things that if you love trivia, and every chapter, you know how, how Monopoly was, where every chapter heading had some kind of little tidbit from the game. The whole series is like that, except for it relates to each book. So we'll get a little trivia in this one. It's so cool. 
I love that. So we'll learn a little something educational. <laughs> I, I love that. I'm a big trivia person. I like doing like pub trivias and wherever they have yeah. trivia. Yeah. Um, and I could completely see a huge tournament in Vegas. Like they have all sorts, like I could see that happening one day. So maybe it might be. Did that you, would be fun. Did you research? Are you sure they don't have it? Because- like they um, I don't know, but okay. So I, I had the tournament in Monopoly. So then mm -hmm. I didn't want to just kind of do the same thing in each book. Cause I wanted yeah. it to have something a little fun for each okay. one. That's just for that game. So this one is like, they're planning trivia nights mm -hmm. and then there's this massive trivia fun event while they're in Vegas for Rox's dirty 30 party. Um, no, that's fine. Okay. Gotcha, <laughs> you gotta have gotcha. a dirty 30 party. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Monopoly. Did you play the game repeatedly while writing? That way you could explain a few strategies and, you know, make, because there are some details in the book about their gameplay. So were you mm -hmm. constantly playing Monopoly or did you have the board right by your computer so you could look at <laughs> the names, you know? So how much uh, Monopoly playing did you experience throughout the writing of Monopoly? Uh, my experience is similar to yours where nobody really wants to play because they know it's going to take forever. So yes, I have the board. I've got a couple on top of this bookshelf here, a couple versions. But mostly when I do my research and my notes, they're just all in my Scrivener file. So like I have a copy of the board. I have every community chess and chance card. I know all these strategies I've written down. And then I also had some really cool input from another author who was just like, here's some things that people always have to deal with when they play Monopoly, like who's cheating and who's sticking stuff under the board or house rules, that kind of stuff that you know that it's going to like cause like a family argument and it's going to be so fun and loud and just crazy. Yeah. And so I kept all those notes in there. And then I did have this, this uh, person on Twitter. Her name is Bailey. And she was so awesome because she's like, don't forget the Monopoly uh, game at McDonald's where <laughs> and yes. I'm like, okay. I try to put every piece of it that we love in there so that, you know, somebody immediately relates to it. Yes. I noticed in the acknowledgments, your shout out to Bailey, is it, um, mm -hmm. about the Monopoly um, at McDonald's. Uh, the the yes. game they used to have where you would get buy something, you get pieces and you had a and you're play, playing Monopoly for, for cash and prizes. Yeah. Yeah, and you never win anything but French fries, but it's fine. Yes, <laughs> but fine. Uh, honestly, there were a lot of nostalgic <laughs> moments. Do mention throughout the movie, The Cutting Edge, 1992, yes. figure skating. I love that movie. Uh, romantic comedy. Great, great movie. Toe pick being one of the most uh, memorable parts <laughs> about it. Toe pick. I love you, that one. How has that movie inspired you? How did it inform your writing, if, if at all? Mm -hmm. Well, I love to give like shout outs to rom coms that just kind of stick with you over the years, even if they're not brand new, they're still relevant and they still have a fond place in your heart. So for this book, since it was Rivals to lovers I was looking for a romance book, uh, movie that also had rivals to lovers and so I chose the the cutting edge because it, I mean Kate and Doug in that movie I love them so much they're just at each other's throat they're more like enemies to lovers but they're stuck together so you you grow on each other and so I was using that for inspiration and then I made it like a movie that she always loved and that her dad knew that. So instead of the Pamchenko twist, which is the really hard move they have to do in the movie, she's got the Sloan twist that her dad helped her come up with. That's this strategy to help you really win a Monopoly game. So I gave it that. And then she loves watching and she keeps suckering Declan into watching it with her. Yeah. So it's kind of their thing. Yeah, I, I love that. You are really good at writing conflict. I don't know what where you are with conflict in your personal life, but you really bring <laughs> it. You bring it on the page where it's like, wow, wow. wow. Like I know it's in H E A. I know it's going to be okay, but man, <laughs> it does seem like you know they they like. Oh wow, they both have 
good reasons to be apart <laughs> from each other. And you're yes. like, oh, how is this going to work? Um, but I thought it was really well done. Um, does writing conflict, do you find that it comes uh, easier to you than writing other parts of the romance journey? Um, I, I usually start with conflict. It's so important because we really need a reason. Why can't they be together? Which that's always a hard sell for me because I just want them to be together already. Like just skip all this extra stuff and let's just get to the happily after, even though I'm going to love it along the way. Um, so I try to start with that. Um, part of this, I would say, is a super shout out to my editor, Roxanne, who really helps me kind of fine tune the conflict. So I start with it and I have it and it does add to my writing time because I think so long and hard about everything. Like, well, how does this make this person feel? And why wouldn't you want to be together? And why couldn't you be together? That kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's conflict is hard. It does not come easy to me, but I think it's essential to the book if you're going to carry people from page one to the end. And I think it really helps the um, payoff be that much greater too at the end when you you're like I don't know how because really if you think about it um a romance book the only thing that is different in every book is the how we all know that the end and result is going to be the happily ever after so it's always about the how are we going to get there you know so yeah. that's the crucial part yeah yeah well well done Thank you. I appreciate it. And you've made my day. So in the book's acknowledgments, you mentioned that you're a board game junkie. And that brings to mind the movie Game Night <laughs> with Jason Bateman and Rachel oh, McAdams. <laughs> I love that movie. Well, I was wondering, are you that level of intensity <laughs> when it comes no. to hosting game nights and stuff like that? Okay, so what level are you? Um, very serious about games. I mean, I want to have fun, but if anybody cheats, we, we've got a war happening because I do not like cheating. I am no nonsense for cheating because to me, you've ruined the fun. <laughs> so, you know, but I'm like so extra about it and people are like, calm down. And I'm like, you cheated, you've ruined game night. <laughs> but yes, I am known uh, in the family and friends. I used to throw these game nights all the time and it would get to be like, up to 50 people sometimes, you know, and yeah. we'd play game. We need something interactive for a game like Taboo is, is a go-to for that many people because you can just split it up into teams and you're like, it's that thing I told you that time when we were at camp, you know, and then somebody <laughs> gets the word because it's not on the card, you know. <laughs> so you've got like these yeah. inside things that you can say. Um, and I love categories. I love Monopoly, Trivialized Pursuit. Give me some Scrabble, Clue. I mean, there's so many. I really love the classics more than anything, but I'm I'm growing on like apples to apples and what do you mean? Um, and there's some other ones too. Are you uh, into love Pictionary? Boggle. Are you into Pictionary? You still love yeah, Boggle? Did you say Boggle? Yes, I do. Eat, give me some trouble. Give me some hungry hippo. <laughs> I mean, hungry, play. hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> um, Boggle was a game I always remember seeing in my parents' closet that we never took out and played. I don't even know where they got Boggle. so much noise. That's yeah. probably why they hid it. Because it's got all these dice in it. And it's yes. in this little clear, like, square. And you shake it up really yes. loud. It's so loud. And then you got to keep shaking it until all the dice land in their little slot. Yeah. And then you've got a timer to make as many words as possible, which yeah. I already love word games. Anyway. Oh, that's so is that kind of like bananagrams? Have you ever played? Kind of, yeah. Okay, like mm -hmm. that. Okay. okay. <laughs> I feel like I am like an expert on games, though. But yes, I, yes. I do know bananas. Yeah. Um, I've got a little bit of everything. Bunkle, LCR, you know, I've got a lot of games. Wow. There's three books in Love and Games series. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking there might be a fourth or fifth or I mean how how far you want to go um I was only contracted for three okay so um that's all I have planned at this time but at, I'm not opposed to later coming back with like I'd love Battleship would be fun okay and I feel like there'd have to be some really cool 
games that I'd have to choose. Um, I don't want to do Scrabble because a lot of people have already done Scrabble. I was looking for something that was really classic that, you know, automatically has its own fan group, you know, or. Oh, yeah. Who, yeah. And plus, I feel like these three games, Monopoly, Trivial Pursuit and Clue could easily be somebody's personality like what type of person are you are you a monopoly a trivial pursuit or are you a clue person and I feel like everybody fits in one of those three categories <laughs> that is really interesting monopoly includes <laughs> book club questions at the back of the yes. book so I'm gonna ask you one of the questions I'm assuming you okay. came up with these questions yes okay <laughs> Well, I'm going to throw one right back at you. Okay. If you oversaw casting the movie version of this book, who would you cast <laughs> as each character? Okay. I fully already have this because I create Pinterest boards when I'm writing in order to have great face grabs and references. So for Harper, she's an actress named Rochelle A. I posted about this the other day too. So my Instagram, um, you could see her in SWAT right now. She's the wife of Shamar Moore in that mm -hmm. show. I knew her from Medea's family reunion. So she's, she's gorgeous and beautiful and a great actress. And then for Declan, he's an actor slash model named Noah Mills. Um, he's, he's been around for a while, but mostly he was in a lot of like cologne ads. And then he did a few shows. He was also in the Sex in the City movie as the really hot guy in the tuxedo at the wedding at, um, at, um, oh. Oh, I got part two, I think. I gotta, I gotta look this dude up. Okay. Well, it's time to play apples to apples. So I have the board game cards. So I'm gonna put down the card and then you are gonna have the sexy cards and you throw down the sexy card that you feel best matches the card that I've put down. I've got Clue is the board game. You have in your hand Nude Scavenger Hunt and another card says Chocolate Body Paint. Which Ooh. card would you put down as closely uh, related to or as close as you can? To I'm going to go with Nude Scavenger Hunt. Okay. What is your thought process behind that? Well, why, why that? Well, I figure we're scavenging for an answer for the, to some whodunit or some yeah. question. And so Scavenger feels as close to Clue as possible. Okay. Okay. Now, do you think that clue playing clue could be an aphrodisiac it could if you like had to lose an article of clothing every time you made a wrong guess or something uh that could be fun so you mean like strip clue like yeah it's like okay hey <laughs> all right uh, i'd be down to see how that plays out okay good round So now I'm putting down the card Operation. Okay. And these are the two cards that you have in your hands. One is Forehead Kisses. And okay. the second card is Candy Nipple Tassels. <laughs> which are a thing I found online. <laughs> I believe that. Easy. I know it's probably in somebody's book. I'm going with uh, candy nipple tassels. Interesting. Now, what is your thought process? Why do you think that that would match the game operation? Okay, mostly because with operation, we're removing something, right? And so uh, I feel like a forehead kiss is putting it on the head mm -hmm. versus you could have to remove the nipple, candy nipple tassel. Ah. Ah, thought process. Yes. I'm <laughs> guessing you eat it off the person, correct? Because it's candy. Oh my God. So you don't even use, it doesn't even buzz on you. Maybe if, if, if your tongue gets close or something, it buzzes or something. Yeah. Something buzzes. <laughs> something is buzzing. Yes. <laughs> yep. The oh, answer is yes. <laughs> You're now NC 17 rated. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. 
So I'm throwing down the card, the game of life. Okay. You you have two cards. One is secret alien baby, a twist on the secret <laughs> baby trope. Secret <laughs> alien baby. And the other it. one is gargoyle fake engagement. Oh my God, this is too hilarious. Somebody needs to go ahead and write these already because this is funny as heck. I feel like I'm going with alien secret baby. Secret alien baby. So do yes. you think that that's something that could happen in life or just in the game? Well, yeah, it's like, oh, you just had a, a, a baby alien uh, pay three $3,000 or something like that. Like you could see uh, the card happening, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> so you could actually see that being a space on the board. Yeah. Game. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, you just got engaged to an alien. Uh or no, you just had a baby with an alien. Up, oh, oh, now you gotta pay because there's no parent or something. And <laughs> he's gone back to his planet. And right. so you have to no yeah. child support. Well he <laughs> went back, back to the thing. Baby. He didn't know that there was a baby. So now she's gotta like <laughs> pay to send the baby on a spaceship to oh, hide it from the scientist and go back three spaces. There you That's go. a good one. You see? <laughs> I like that. That works. I love this game. I'm putting down a Scrabble card. So Scrabble. Um, I love Scrabble. Now, here's the thing. You have two cards. And let me explain that these two cards, these are terms from the 19th century for the word for sex. So I was able to find 19th century phrases that were used as euphemisms for the sex act. Okay. So okay. this is Scrabble. You have in your you have in your hand a card for amorous congress. Amorous congress. And the other one is blanket hornpipe. Oh my Look god. Look it up. It, it is a thing. Blanket hornpipe. An amorous Congress. I'm going to go with amorous Congress. Okay. And the reason why is I feel like this is a romance game we're playing. And we know it's got to have a happily ever after, which means there's love and love and amorous. So that's okay. that's my thought process on that. OK, <laughs> OK, I I accept I that is correct. Yes, you've, you've won that round. <laughs> <laughs> Although I really love Lincoln Hornpipe. I just feel like that one is really funny. <laughs> I found a whole detailed like explanation of why they think that it was called Blanket Hornpipe, why that was used. It's fascinating stuff. Okay, this is the last round. And of course, I had to put down a Monopoly card. So the game is Monopoly. <laughs> And here are the two cards you have in your hand. Erotic massage. And the second card is spooning. Spooning and erotic massage. What would you say mm -hmm. matches with Monopoly? Okay. I'm going to go with erotic massage. <laughs> I feel like, okay, so your goal with Monopoly is to get around the board or in sex to get to where you need to get. And so the fastest way to get there is an erotic massage versus spoon. <laughs> that is a very well thought out argument. When I thought erotic massage, I thought of Mr. Moneybags just like massaging oh. somebody down with oil and it freaked me out. So I probably yeah, that's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine he's got like the top hat? Like, oh God, and that little mustache. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed Apples to Apples, sexy board game romance edition. <laughs> well, Mia, you are a ton of fun. Thank you so Thank much you. for making time to join me here on Reader Seeks Romance. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you offering me to be here. <laughs>